Hey everyone, Nick DeRobertis here teaching you financial modeling. And today we're going to be building out the retirement portion of the dynamic salary retirement model in Python. And this retirement portion of the model is the final portion, which is going to finish up the model and the lecture series. So we've been working on this dynamic salary retirement model. We built out the entire thing in Excel. And then in Python, we've already built out the salary and wealth portions. So look at the prior videos if you haven't seen those. And now we're just going to build out the retirement portion of the model and finish it out. So let's jump back over to the Jupyter Notebook. So we already have you know, all this initial setup stuff and we have the salary section and we have the wealth section. And now we're going to build out the retirement section. So here I'm going to have retirement and now we're going to write out logic, which the goal here is as soon as this person hits uh, the desired cash, which is given in the inputs, then uh, whatever year it is that they've accumulated that much wealth, that is the year uh, that they're going to be able to retire. So uh, we don't have to completely start from scratch here we already have a way to get the wells going up over time. Um, so then we just need to take this and make it stop as soon as we hit the desired cache. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start from this code and just copy it. Um, and I'm going to switch data uh, for model data since this is code which is going to go inside of a function. So we wanna use data, not model data. Um, and I'll just give that another try there so it still works uh, and gives us the salary or the wealth in each year. And we could make this thing go out to, you know, 30 years or whatever. And now we can see we do hit the point where we hit the desired cash. We can see here that year 28 is going to be the year, but we want the code to be able to stop specifically at that point and tell us that that was the year that they were able to retire. Um, so what we can do to accomplish that, there are a few different ways that we can go about this. Um, one way is with actually a different type of loop that we haven't covered uh, called a while loop. And a while loop, uh, you know, whereas the for loop runs for whatever you're passing it, you know, range, it will, you know, just run 30 times. If you have, you know, for uh, something in a list, then it's going to run for as many items as you have in that list, um, etc. Whereas the while loop runs until some condition is met. So it's kind of a combination between a loop and an if statement, and it's going to stop the loop as soon as that if condition is true, uh, or sorry, as soon as it is false, it's going to stop the loop. So um, what we can do is we can also uh, initialize wealth to zero before starting this. And what we want to do is say while the wealth is less than the desired cash then we're going to do this. Um, but you'll notice as soon as I make that change and, and try to run this, that it's not working anymore, right? Because uh, this I, there's no I anymore. We had I from my code that I deleted to where it was a string, and so I'm getting an error. Uh, but really, we just need to have a new way of figuring out what the year is going to be. So let's also start the year at zero. And every time we're going to increment the year by one. Uh, so that way the first loop is starting at zero, then it adds one. So the first loop it's one, and then it comes around to the next loop. Now it's gonna add one again. So the year is gonna be two on the second loop as we would expect. Um, so now we run this and we can see it does indeed stop at year 28. So this already has gotten us to what we wanted, um, only that we don't necessarily have it in a very usable format yet. Um, you know, it printed out what the year last year was, 
but we don't have that saved in a variable that we could use in some other way. Uh, it's just kind of, you know, the, the, print, the prints of the well stop happening at that point. So, but let's look at the value of the year variable when this is all done. Oh, that is 28. So the year variable now contains what we need as our final answer. Um, so just putting year there at the end, then we get the retirement year from that. And the reason was because it kept going through the loops, it kept incrementing the year. And then as soon as we got enough cash, uh, this condition evaluated to false, and then it stopped going through additional loops. And so the last time that it incremented the year would be the last year that we added the wealth. And that would be the same year where the wealth has now surpassed the desired cash. So just the year variable is gonna contain what we need. Um, so then we've gotten to the final answer, but we wanna clean up the output here a little bit. Um, so, you know, we don't want to just, uh, you know, print out, a, show a number at the end. We wanna say what this number means. Um, so we can say, uh, you know, it will take, you know, a year, need to put the F at the beginning of the string. It will take year, years to retire. Okay, now this is a little bit better. It will take 28 years to retire. That's a lot more clear. Um, but we do have like two different sections of the output here. One is showing the wealth year over year and one is showing the final years to retirement. So it makes sense to separate those. So let's uh, put like a header here in the output um, and we can put one here as well. Uh, and now this is a little bit better. We have kind of a header for each portion of the output, but it's still all together. There's a couple ways that we can add some separation here in between these lines. One is just, you know, kind of simple intuitive. You can just print an empty string and that's gonna make an empty line there. Uh, the other way to go about it is backslash n actually means make a new line. So if we put backslash n retirement there, then that's going to do the exact same thing as uh, having the empty print. So even if you wanted you know, a few lines there of spacing, uh, then you can easily do that in one print statement there. Um, so now we have two clear sections in the output. What are the wells over time? And what are the retirement details? And we get our main answer here in the retirement details that it's going to take 28 years to retire. So now uh, this block does do what we want it to do, but we should go ahead and wrap this up into a function as well. Um, so these, uh, or so the, uh, these are all initializing for the loop. They aren't actually inputs. This is all gonna happen inside the function. So years to retirement. And the only uh, input here is going to be the data. And then we can take all of the remaining code and hit tab to indent it. Um, and we're going to switch this to returning the year at the end. Um, so then when we call years to retirement on the model data, then we see the whole summary of the output here that it's going to take 28 years to retire and we can also have that saved in a variable as well uh, so that we could do additional things with that result um, and so now our model works we have it all together um, so now that you have all your sections working you got your final result the next thing that you should do in building out your models is go to this kernel menu and then restart and run all cells. Because this is gonna say, you know, throughout your, your session, you've been jumping all over the place, uh, you know, building things and then deleting them. And so things are just in a weird state from you playing around with things. So if you restart this kernel and run all cells, that gives you a fresh session and it runs everything in order. And that way uh, we can be sure that the model does indeed work from end to end. And the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna remove this data equals model data cell. Um, and then I'm going to restart and run all cells again. 
Um, so there we want to see again that it goes all the way through without error. And here actually it did have an error. Um, I accidentally left this one cache saved during year using the data, not the model data. Um, so this one should be model data to show that because uh, it's happening outside the function. So now I'm going to restart and run all cells again. And now we can see it ran all the way through just fine. Um, and now because all the functions are set to take data and they're not directly using the model data, that means that any possible data can be passed into this function. Um, so, you know, you can change it so that, uh, you know, you're passing the model inputs with, you know, let's do starting salary equals 30,000 and then you run it again. And now we can see it takes 37 years to retire. Uh, well, what if instead we had uh, the cost of living raise was higher at 4% uh, going back to the original starting salary? Then it would be three years quicker for us to retire from that additional return. Um, and so you're able to pass whatever you want to it. And as we look at other extensions to, the, to models, as we go throughout the course, you're going to be able to add whatever extensions you want very easily. Uh, and it's not tied to this particular instance of the model inputs defined here at the top. You can pass it whatever inputs you want and everything flows through the entire model. So that wraps up uh, this lecture series on going uh, to build out the full dynamic salary retirement model in Python. The next lecture series is going to be focused on visualization. So thanks for listening and see you next time.